Greetings, family. This is Kyle Dixon here again for another post for Women's Appreciation Month, Women's History Month, uh, some call it. And uh, this post is definitely something uh, dealing with a person that is close to home, literally almost. And uh, this is someone that I've heard about growing up a lot. Um, I heard her name very much so, and it was always in, on good on good terms. And the woman I'm going to present today is Miss Wilma Rudolph. Yes, uh, the Olympic gold medalist, uh, the world-renowned Wilma Rudolph. So just to give you a little background, family, on, on her. Uh, she was born in 1940 in St. Bethlehem, I believe, uh, Tennessee, which is uh, either right next to Clarksville or ended up becoming Clarksville, Tennessee, which is about 50 miles outside of Nashville where I grew up. So she was born to a family of 22 siblings. She was the, she was the 20th sibling, and that's a lot of children, even for then. Uh, and my mom and dad uh, come from somewhat big families, but that, that, that was pretty big. And um, unfortunately, as a kid, she had sicknesses. Uh, she, was, she had scarlet fever and caught pneumonia, which ended up giving her polio by age four. And polio, if you don't know, polio is like a paralysis of the muscles. Uh, it affects the spinal cord. So, and it's, and it's by infection. She ended up having to get treatment outside of Clarksville because for African Americans during that time, there wasn't sufficient treatment. So, literally, her parents for two years straight had to drive to Meharry. Uh, medical college, which is in Nashville, Tennessee, across from Fisk University, one of the black, uh, few black hospitals in the nation. And uh, that just goes to show you, like, you know, in our institutions, how much their lifesaver they are. But she ended up going to Meharry for two years straight. They drove once a week, two years straight, to get treatment at Meharry. And in between that treatment, she was wearing a brace uh, for her leg and I think an orthopedic shoe as well. And also her family, her siblings used to rub her leg, like, four times a day for like those years of the, her going to therapy and those doing those things would help her to heal. And by age nine, she had, she got the brace off actually. And then uh, by age 12, she was able to literally like walk and run and whatnot. So that was a blessing. So when she finally got to high school, all black high school in Clarksville, she was a hell of an athlete. I mean, she played basketball, she ran track and where the story really gets interesting is Ed Temple, the famous track coach at Tennessee State University, HBCU in Nashville, Tennessee. He ended up seeing her play basketball and noticed how much of an athlete, great athlete she was. So he invited her to come down for the summer to practice with the Tennessee State track team, the Tiger Bells. And right then and there, he knew it was like, oh, I got someone here. And he ended up coaching her. Uh, at the 1956, her first um, appearance in the Olympics, 1956 Olympics, I think in Melbourne. And she ended up getting bronze in the 4 by one relay, um, which, I mean, she was 16 years old. So from there, she ended up getting a scholarship to Tennessee State. And she said that she was very uh, appreciative and happy that she could receive a scholarship because of her family's economic condition and her having all those siblings. It was just hard for them to be able to uh, pay for college and education. So she was fortunate with that. So... Um, Ed Temple was her coach, and the Tiger Bells was her crew, and they ended up going to the Olympics, back, back to the Olympics in 1960 in Rome. So what's interesting is most of the team were Tiger Bells. Most of the team was Ed Temple's, and Ed Temple was the head coach for the women's track team, USA women's track team. So that's amazing, man, for, for during that time frame, for black male, be the head coach, and then that to be your coach. So I know she, uh, Wilma Rudolph talked about in uh, another interview where she mentioned that she was always nervous doing track meets, but that kind of helped propel her to run fast and keep her on a, uh, on, a on an attentive uh, type of mindset going into the race. And she always wanted to see her coach by her because that kind of comforted her. So she ended up making history. She won the 100 meter, the 200 meter, and the four by one relay with her team and ended up being the first USA female to win three gold medals in Olympic relay races. And that's amazing. Amazing. At 20 years old, right, she's doing this. 20 years old. Now, what's interesting, she ended up retiring at 22. Uh, there was a race in America, in California, where they were versus the Russians. And uh, she ended up uh, getting behind in the relay race because uh, she won a four by one with her teammates. And she told herself that if she, um, if she, 
got the race won, like if she won the race and caught the Russian, that she would retire because she said, like, you know, that's just a blessing in disguise. I'm not, you know, I would, I'm something was meant to be. But she said if she didn't catch the Russian and didn't win that race, that she was going to continue to the next Olympics, the 1964 Olympics. So she caught the Russian and won the race, and she kept to her promise that I she retired. So she ended up getting her uh, finishing her education at Tennessee State, getting her education degree, ended up going on to teach and coach in various places. Uh, she ended up actually coaching at DePaul University in Indiana. And she ended up uh, moving different places, California, Chicago, St. Louis, Indiana, etc. Um, and she also, uh, during this time frame, she wrote a book in the 1970s called Wilma, Autobiography. And they also made a TV movie about her life. And uh, she was inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, the, the USA Olympic uh, Track and Field Hall of Fame, the uh, Black Sports Hall of Fame. And they actually ended up creating an award uh, for her. I'm just looking at, I'm honestly looking at my notes briefly. They actually ended up creating an award for her, the Wilma Rudolph uh, Award of Courage by the uh, Women's Sports Foundation. So, uh, I mean, this woman is amazing. I heard her, a lot, her name growing up a lot. Actually, my parents got a chance to meet her while they were at, uh, attending Tennessee State. And they just uh, talked about how gracious she was. She was always very polite, very uh, just kind of accommodating as far as asking people's questions about certain things. Um, so I heard her name a lot growing up and her name was solidified in the Nashville community for what she brought to Tennessee State, uh, the legacy that she left. And that definitely inspired me as an athlete growing up to say, like, hey, you know, she can do the gold medal and be from these uh, these places around where I live. Then there's potential for me or anyone else to do the same. Um, so unfortunately, she ended up uh, passing away of brain cancer in 1994. Uh, but again, her legacy lives on, and I encourage you to definitely check out some of her footage. They called her the Black Gazelle, right? So, Wilma Rudolph, my post for Women's History Month today. Appreciate you, family, for listening. All right, I got another post coming soon, as you know. All right? So, I encourage you to do the same. Peace and blessings. Salute.